How are you doing everybody? Jonathan here. And in this video, I'm going to address a topic that I think needs some attention. And that is, are you a trainer bully? Now, while I can say that I'm not the biggest fan of all the Planet Fitness commercials you see out there, I think the yelling personal trainer is a great depiction of one of the aspects of a trainer bully that you want to avoid. Now, I'm not going to put the whole commercial on this video, but feel free to click here if you want to watch the trainer bully in action. But there's more to being a trainer bully than just yelling too much. Sometimes you need to project your voice. Your client may be far away, or you just may really be into the client's workout and not notice how loud you are. Those are exceptions to the rule. When I talk about being a trainer bully, I'm talking about your intentions and the emotions that you're trying to elicit out of your clients based on your action. Oftentimes, big box gyms tend to promote trainer bullying in order to make sure that a trainer can get a sale. So this may have been what you were taught. A trainer bully will usually try to elicit three emotions, fear, shame, and intimidation. Number one is fear. Now you have to understand, fear is one of the most useful tools in advertising. So I'm not surprised that this is prevalent in personal training sales as well as every other industry out there. The difference is with cold advertising, the ad is trying to get the end user's attention. This doesn't have to be the case for personal training because people are coming to you. They're telling you that they want to get in shape. So you don't always need to strike that nerve of fear. Here's an alternate route to take. Instead of inducing fear, why not educate? Most people don't understand the importance of body fat. And you have an opportunity to position yourself as an expert by eloquently and effectively explaining what the client needs to work on and why. So you don't need to beat somebody up that's asking for help anyway. The next tactic is shame. This tactic is employed by giving clients exercise routines that you know that they can't handle, watching them fail, and letting them hear about it. This is another widely used tactic of big box gyms. Why not turn that tactic on its head? Turn shame into motivation. Motivation uses every exercise routine as a test that can be built upon. No matter what, when a client first starts or whenever a client doesn't exercise, my response is, okay, good job. That's the default. If it's somebody I've never worked out before, my next comment is, now we're going to build on this so you can get to your goal. If it's an existing client that is doing worse than they have before, it gives me a chance to ask what they may be doing outside of our workouts and can help me help them by offering lifestyle advice. It also shows that I care. From there, my mindset is, let's see how we can improve the next time. The key word is let's. You're showing the client that you're in it together. You're showing the client that you're invested in their success. And you're showing the client that you're taking an active role in their betterment. Now, the final intimidation tactic is intimidation. Now, to me, intimidation can come from two places, a bit of an inferiority complex or frustration. I'm talking about trainers that actively kind of get a kick out of beating up their clients verbally, in public, or even physically. Let me tell you something. Motivation does not come from yelling at your client. Motivation will stem from your passion. Think about the difference between you yelling at your television when your favorite sports team makes a bonehead play versus your favorite American football team being at the goal line and all you're thinking is, come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. There's a very different intention there and it's received completely differently. But one of the best compliments that I get from my clients is when they tell me, you know, Jonathan, I wanted to have that piece of cake or I didn't want to come to the workout this morning, but I could hear your voice in my head. So you don't need to yell at your clients in order for them to listen to you. You need to believe in your clients. You need to show them that you're in the foxhole with them. You need to care. Understand that these clients spend their whole day not getting appreciated at work, at home, in their love life, with their friends, whatever the case may be. And you might be the one thing that they cling on to in order to keep working toward their end goal. So don't abuse your power. Don't be a trainer bully. Lift your clients up. Be passionate. Let them know you're in it together. Inform them. Inspire them. Give them goals to shoot for, and you'll never have to yell another day in your life. So that's about it. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember, as usual, subscribe to this channel. More videos every Sunday and every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I can't wait to make the next one. So remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe. Stress helps all get rest. Don't slap anybody. Love your clients. They will love you back. I'll see you all tomorrow or the next day. And you have a good one. She motivated them by doing a lot of yelling at them, doing a lot of berating on television. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of people put together the necessity of yelling and berating with uh, fat loss and success. Like that's the reason why they lost the weight. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand that, first of all, it's a personality thing. For the most part, that's who Jillian Michaels is. All right, so 